Finish. Button. Schande, die werfen nach Madoho, wo das bei ihm auch wohl das Wort für wo. Oh, wir bleiben nicht so lange, bevor zu lernen, dass sie ja der Amadena, mir ja der Dach und Verdammt und der Bella und mir ja der Dach und 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 der Dach. Marshal Allah Muhammad al Abduhu Salat al Mababa. This is normally the class for Usulul Na Usul Iman. Usulul Iman, the foundations of faith. I think uh, I mentioned the basis of worship. Those are the foundations of faith. That class is replaced tonight with this uh, presentation and we'll resume next Friday, inshallah, if Allah wills. And tomorrow, tomorrow's class is still scheduled, which is the basis of worship uh, on the fifth day of the Quran. Tonight, we want to talk about the issue of <clears throat> which is very important issue of the tricks and the plots of Satan. Tricks and plots of the devil, Satan, or better known in Arabic as a shaitan. And this, just about what the Allah, many scholars <clears throat> will explain classical books that were written about this issue because there's a lot of uh, benefit in some People have now taken those great classical works and teach them and explain them. So they have, they do, and inshallah, they will continue um, during our time in the future. One of the books is famous, written by Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyya. Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyya, which was the contemporary and the student of Shif of Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah. He wrote a book called Iqadat um, al Fan. <laughs> and this yani, is a book talking about the plots of the devil. And then you have the great scholars that came uh, before him, which is Abi Faraj, Muhammad ibn Ahmed, and Josie. So you have Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya and you have Ibn Jawzi. Ibn Jawzi, and, and they're both um, people who were in the area of Iraq and Syria, like this. Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya being in, um, in, in Sham, Damascus, with Sheikh Hassan Taymiyyah. And of course, they traveled to different places like Iraq and Egypt. And then uh, Ibn Jawzi being in Iraq and uh, two different time periods, but they both wrote books around this issue. So the book that we will be taking from tonight is by Ibn Jawzi, which is called Talbis and Talbis and Iblis. And Talbis and Iblis. The tricks of the devil. While the book by Ibn Qayyim al uh, uh, um, is the plot you know, I mean, of the devil. So they are similar. They're similar. And, and each one has their uh, flavor and so forth. So we will take some benefit from the tricks of the devil at Talbiz and Iblis by Ibn Jawzi Rahimahullah Ta'ala. <coughs> Of course, um, <clears throat> the author he started by praising Allah Taala for the two salutations on the Prophet Sallallahu and then of course the name of the book again is Talbis Iblis. Talbis Iblis. Talbis is tricks, like you said, Yanni. That's Talbis. That's trickery. Talbis from the word Labisa, because Labisa means to clothe. So when you add the ta in the beginning. And you put the ya after the ba, 
Labisa becomes Tasbis. And that yeah emphasizes a lot of covering. This is one of the things about the Arabic language. Different forms of the word indicate a lot more uh, the modes like this. So you have Labisa. You say Labisa Thoba, uh, 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 Labisa Ahmadu Thoba. Often he, he put on, he wore garments. So Labisa, if you add the time to begin it, Labisa becomes uh, 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 Tel from the word Labisa. Tel, and then the Ba and Labisa, if you add the Ya after the Ba, becomes B rather than Ba. Labi, Labi, and then the scene stays. So Tel Bs come from Labisa. So clothing. As Labi said, and Telbis is the act of covering something like you would put on clothes. So Telbis, Iblis. I mean, the tricks, the covering, the deception of Iblis. Now, and we mentioned before in some of the khutbah that Iblis, they said it comes from the word uh, Belis. Belis. And Belis is the meaning of Belis, the scholars have said, means um, Yeas. Yay as means to despair, give up all hope. So Allah gave him that name because he despaired from the mercy of Allah when he did not make repentance after disobeying Allah to what the hour. He did not own up to his sin and thus it caused him to become arrogant um, over Allah's command, meaning Telling that he's above law, he's above, you know, the call of obedience to Allah, and that arrogance drove him to despair from the forgiveness, mercy of Allah. So Iblis is the word that is uh, coming from the word uh, Balas, which means to despair, yayas, and Allah called him Iblis, the one who despaired very much, he despairs from much and all of the mercy of Allah. So tell these Iblis, the concept should be understood and clear now, the covering or the deception, the tricks of Iblis. The author, um, Al-Imam, Sheikh of Islam, and they say Al-Imam, which normally means he is a leader firstly in character. Imam, as Allah said, uh, uh, about Ibrahim in the Ibrahim can the Ummah. Ummah has a lot of different meanings. Here Ummah means Qutwa, an example. Mm -hmm. And not that he's a nation of people, Ummah. And likewise, Imam here means Qutwa, he is an example. You know, as Allah said, Waja'anna Mutaqina, Waja'anna Mutaqina Imama, and make them Mutaqin, righteous Imam, I mean, leaders, talking about when you make dua for your children and your wives, and that dua in the Quran, Allah said, and the and what the Allah Mustaqina Imama, and make it us, make them from the righteous leaders, not just the leaders, but the righteous leaders, meaning a example. As Allah said, and indeed we have put in the Master of Allah, we made him, yani uswatun hasana, yani the uswa here, example, putwa. So here, Imam, <coughs> meaning the one who had the example of good character and knowledge, and then, of course, belief, piety, and knowledge. His name is Abi Faraj. Abi Faraj is his nickname. His name was Muhammad. <coughs> and they say Ibn uh, Ahmed Ibn Ali. A Josie. So you see, they used to call and name their children Muhammad. And then Ahmed, as Allah mentioned from the people of the book, used to talk and call the Prophet Muhammad Ahmed, and the Arabs used to call him that. And then Ali, which is uh, the cousin of the Prophet, brother, son in law, pardon me, of the Prophet, which is the one who defends. And some say the word Ali means like Asad, lion. So you see, this is common, they will name their children the names of the prophets of Sallallahu Muhammad and the companions. 
this book has been checked uh, to be Siblis by many ulama. The various hadith have been uh, checked because some of the hadith are not authentic and it has been commented on as it relates to meanings of words and so forth so that the people can get the most out of this book. Muhammad Ali Abu Abbas is one of the ones who حق عليه وعلق عليه وخرج حديث. He actually gave comments where comments needed to be given, such as the meanings of words, where the hadith comes from, and uh, also when you talk about uh, if the hadith, what the scholars of the past and present says about the hadith. So the one who did the uh, commenting and the issue of uh, reviewing the hadith of this book, he was in our time, but Abi Faraj, which is Muhammad ibn Ahmad ibn Ali, uh, Josie, he is from the past who wrote the book Tricks of the Devil. This particular version, uh, the, 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 the one who published it in Nashur, yeah, in Maktab al Quran, which is uh, a publication called the Maktab uh, uh, Quran means the publisher of Quran or Quran is publisher and it's in uh, Mosul which means Egypt. In Riyadh. So you have in Saudi Arabia they were responsible for the printing and distribution, overlooking and, and managing while the people did the work for this particular edition of the book is from Egypt. So this is important when you talk about which edition, which print, because there may be mistakes in some prints that may not be checking the hadith and other of the editions and so forth. So this information is important. We want to talk just a little bit about the author and how he was raised because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned "Wakadalika, Wakadalika, Mokusu Aleka Amba Rusul Ma Yathbitu Bihi Fawadik." And indeed, we have informed you of Muhammad some of the stories of the past prophets that which would strengthen your heart for the mission. So many of the scholars they quote uh, this particular ayah. You know, the scholars he quote this ayah and they say that this is also applicable when we talk about people's work, that you know something about them, because it not only strengthens your love and your heart for the subject matter, it makes you appreciate and um, respect the author, and you make dua for him. So we're going to just talk just a little bit, a minute or two, about the author, and so you can understand the plight of the one who wrote the book and him himself. He is considered again Sheikh al Alama. The, the, the Sheikh here means from the highest level. Alama is another indication his knowledge is very high. You have Alam, you have Ulama, all these are terms. So Alam, the one who has knowledge. Ulama, plural for people who are Alam. Alam is singular, ulama'u is more than one alam, or more than two alam. But when you say alama, then this is like the highest grade of using the word. This is like a, a, when you say a billboard or a signpost, that person is like that, you know, for everyone to benefit and see along the way, just like the <coughs> signpost or the, tr the, the landmark. So he's a sheikh al alama. Al Hafif. Hafif here doesn't just mean he memorized the Quran. Hafif means <coughs> rule number one, he memorized the Quran. Rule number two, the, he memorized the books of Nahu language. Rule number three, he memorized the hadith of the Prophet with the chain, like we called it last night in the darks, and the text of the hadith. Rule number three, he memorized the books of rules and regulations for tip, how to apply and understand everything from the sciences of knowledge that that person learned, he memorized it. That's the meaning of half. And they give him the title, Shaykh al-Islam, meaning 
he was one of a kind in his time, or he helped revive the religion during his time. And this is one of the meanings of Shia for Islam. He uh, is a person who was born in El Iraq. El Iraq. Many ulama came from this place, El Iraq, of the past, and now, in the time that we live, Allah most time, there are some there still from Ahlul Sunnah, but most of them uh, from the people of Bid'ah uh, there in Iraq, Allah most time. I made a mistake. His name is Abu Faraj, his nickname. <coughs> Abdul Rahman, this is Muhammad. Abdul Rahman, now. Ibn Ali, Ibn Muhammad. So you see his name uh, Abdul Rahman Ibn yani Ali. His father name is Ali. Ibn Muhammad, his grandfather is Muhammad. Uh, and um, his uh, uh, you have um, uh, 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 you have uh, You have uh, when they mention Ibn Ibn Ibn, then this is that person after the first Ibn is the father. That person after the second Ibn is the grandfather. That person after the third Ibn is the great grandfather, like uh, like this. So he's Abdul Rahman. Ibn Ali Ali is his father. Ibn Muhammad, his grandfather is Muhammad. And then his great grandfather, name was Ali, <coughs> like his yani, father, and then Ibn Ubay, and then his, <coughs> I guess you would say his third, when you say grandfather, great grandfather, great, great, the second. So the third one is Ibn Ubay. And he's Ibn Hamad from the family of Hamad. And then you have Yani the fourth grandfather, Yani Ibn the, the fifth grandfather Ibn Ahmed. You have Ahmed there, and you have Ibn Jafar. And then the, the sixth grandfather is Jafar. And then you have Yani uh, the seventh grandfather Ibn Abdullah. His, his name is Abdullah. And then you have Yani uh, uh, Abdul Rahman again. And then, if you keep going, you have a little possum, um, and then you have a little Muhammad, and that last Muhammad is the name of the son of Abu Bakr Sadiq. So he's from the family of Abu Bakr Sadiq, way down the line, by way of Abu Bakr's son, Muhammad, Ibn Abi Bakr. A Sadiq. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and, 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 and this is, you know, common for the people of knowledge to have these different family trees, either from the Prophet or companions of the Maker. And of course, he was from Al Baghdad, he was humbly in his fifth. And they say he was uh, 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 500 and uh, he was uh, born uh, 500 uh, and, and uh, 10 after the Prophet of Salaam and Baghdad. And some said 500 and, and, and they, they give the like maybe five years off or on, because you know they didn't have like Bible statistics and birth certificates. So sometimes they might, you know, say five years under or five years over like this. But most of them say he was born in the uh, year 510 after the Prophet's son. His father died when he was young. He would go back to this issue of being your team again, as we talked about last night. And he had um, three other siblings, Ibn Joseph. It was actually two other siblings, three of them all together. So the father died when he was young. He was an orphan, and his mother raised him. 
and she took him to people of knowledge as a young boy. But the father also you know, he, uh, raised him upon knowledge before he died, you know, at the age five, six, seven, like this. From some of the great people that comes from the students of Ibn Josie is the one that we talk about all the time. Ibn Qadam al Maqdisi was from the students of Ibn Josie. You can see the benefit, you know, subhanAllah, of, of how these great people, you know, uh, came about. It said, and these are some of the statements that Ibn Josie made when he became older, and people recorded these statements from him when he talked about his serious life. He said that his success wasn't because of things that he did and what he accomplished, he said, but his success uh, primarily is because of Latifa uh, Rabbi, uh, uh, the way that he was raised. So he didn't give credit to his accomplishments and hard work, although that's part of it. He went back to the basis of everything. It starts at home, how he was raised. And this is from the statement of the majority himself. And he said his father would take him to the library when he was six years old. Six years old. He said, and, you know, he was um, very close to um, the other children, you know, and, and the other children would come close around him when they would see him, but he wouldn't have a desire to play with the children. Similar to what Imam Nelson went through when he was a kid. They wanted him to come out and play, and he would cry because they would bother him because he wanted to recreate as a young boy. It was Josie was similar like that. He said, and uh, he wouldn't use his mind to answer his teachers. He said, and he can't remember being someone who was a person who just went with the people or followed what everybody else did. He said, neither can he remember being a person who would just laugh outwardly. Ha, 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 ha. And he's showing you how he was real. If you follow the line of statements versus what he said in the beginning, giving credit to how he was raised by his father. And this is the young boy, again, five, six, seven in the library with his father, some of the Islamic library. He said, and to the point he remembered he was seven years old with his father, And his father would take him to sit in the circles of knowledge at seven years old. And he wouldn't uh, sit down with the regular common folk, you know, I mean, the shabi, the people who were regular people in the lesson. He said, rather, what he used to seek out was the muhaddith, the aslibu, you know, I mean, muhaddith. He said, but he wanted to sit with the scholars of hadith. This is a little boy. So the shaykh that was the scholar of hadith, he said, for your hadith will be musnad, you know, so the shaykh would be reading the musnad, meaning the hadith, like we read like last night from Bukhari, Fatima Bukhari, him Allah Ta'ala, <coughs> like this, you know, and then you mentioned in the hadithna, Yani Futayda ibn Sa'id, Fatima hadithna, Ismail ibn Ja'far, Abdullah ibn Dinar, and ibn Umar. Like this. He said the, the, the shaykh of the muhaddu be reading the musnad, the, the, the collection of hadith with the chain. He said, and he used to memorize it, but he would rush home to, you know, to the house to write everything down so he don't forget. This is the young boy, Ibn Joseph, the one who wrote Talbisi Bleeks. Also, he's talking about how sometimes they didn't have much food, just some bread. And you know, he would eat that bread and suffice with that to stay busy with the knowledge. Or if they didn't have anything, 
then he will practice zuhud, so he would not leave all fast and he will fast. This is again a young boy, subhanAllah, how he grew up, you know, how he was raised. And then he said, Wala, wala yani afna'i fin wahid min al-funum. And he did not become satisfied with one particular department of science of knowledge. He wanted to touch and master all of the areas of knowledge. SubhanAllah. He said, so he would listen to the lessons of yani, the Mahabra, like we were given now presentation and the lessons in the Hadith. And he would follow the way of those people who yani, were Tebu Zuhad. And he would follow the way of those people really weren't chasing after the, the worldly life. Because in every society, every time you have people that the main thing for them is dunya, what they can gather, what they can emerge, what they could, you know, pile up. He didn't have that desire. He said, Summa Paratu Luba. This is very important. He said, then he started. Yani, uh, when he began his learning, he started studying and reading the Naho, the Sarath of Yani Lova. He said, and because of the language, Hay Allah Lahu Asbab al -ilm. Allah made the language a way for him to grasp the knowledge. So it always goes back to the Arabic language. And the Imam Shafi used to say, "Man atakan biluga atakan fi funun akara." Whoever perfects the language, he will be strong, and he will perfect the other sciences in the religion. Whoever doesn't perfect the language, then you know he won't be able to perfect the other sciences of the religion. Now, Allah Akbar. He said that he, he was able to, because of the Arabic language, reach levels that he would never think he could reach. Another description, Imam al-Dahabi, when he talked about the life of Ibn Josie, he said, He had a quick and fast, precise memory. And he was a person, Joseph al-Tasneef, you know, he could really, you know, uh, 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 because of his uh, diligence of knowledge, he could really art the books, and he had a lot of um, works that he authored in his in his lifetime. And some of them consist of many volumes. He said, "But however, you know, nothing of the worldly life could pull him away from you know, this life of knowledge and this love that he had for that knowledge." And Allah put it in his heart to accept this mission beyond the level of imagination. Now, Imam al Dahabi, and then we'll, we'll go into the, the actual book, a few more things about the author. Imam al Dahabi, when he talked about Ibn Josi and his life, in the book, the famous book Imam al Dahabi wrote about the uh, this book, he said, yeah, they used to, yeah, Ibn Josie had yani, a strong understanding and a strong uh, mind without any type of having to defend what he had of knowledge, meaning that his knowledge was solid. His knowledge was solid. Tafkir bila difa. I mean, he would, would uh, 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 be able to deal with the people without, you know, being um, swayed or, or, you know, persuaded or, or, you know, compromised. And he had, I mean, a, 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 a type of skill where he could write his books in poetry, which, which many of the ulama did, which makes it easy to memorize. He writes the books in a form of poetry so that you can memorize them easier. And, and he also used to uh, uh, 
the Imam Adabi said that the Imam uh, uh, Ibn Jozi, no one was singing like him before his time, neither after his time. And this doesn't mean absolutely nobody, but this just means he's in the class of those people that that will be said about them no matter what time they lived in or where they lived. Like they're in a class by themselves. And they would say this, you know, nobody was like him before him or after his death. You know, this doesn't mean absolutely, it just means like he's in that special category. Now, he was a person who would, and he raised the flag of keeping the remembrance of Allah and the admonishment of Allah and keeping his duty to Allah and to the people. And he was a person who was very respectful of the sciences of the knowledge of Islam, would have played with the knowledge. As it relates to his physical um, um, disposition that he had, and Husn al Hayya, he had a, 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 a nice, um, when you look at him, he looked pleasant. Or Husn al Sol, and his voice was, you know, not raspy and not squeaky, you know, he had a, a voice that, you know, people could tolerate and would like to listen to. And he was a person who, um, like I said, Husn al Sira, he was yani, a person who was excellent when it came to biography, and he was al bahru fi tafsir He was an ocean of knowledge in the science of tafsir. And he was a person who was alama tafsir wa tarikh. And he was a great scholar on a high level when it came to history and biographies of the people of the past. And he was a person, Mausufa bi husn hadith, he was described as a person who would uh, hear Husn Hadith would mean he wouldn't and he um, narrate the Hadith to the fabricated and take Hadith with people and the chains of the liars like this. And he was a person who mastered all of the sciences. And he was a person who also specialized the tip in you know, medicine, herbal medicines and you know, those types of healing uh, for people who are sick. And, and this uh, 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 is, is some of the description of, 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 of Ibn Jose, the author to the least of least. After he gave his introduction, he prayed on Tabarrah to Allah Ta'ala's recitation of the Prophet Then he mentions the envy and the hostilities between Iblis and Adam. He said this began yani, with the issue of honoring and respecting uh, the first creation, Adam. This is where the issue of hostilities between uh, Iblis and Adam came in. And this is one of the Tabarakul what the Allah told him, I need the famous story to bow down. Here the bow means to respect Adam, acknowledge Adam, and that which Allah has given him of uh, respect by way of making sujood. And sujood here, the scholars, they said, didn't mean sujood as an act of worship, but sujood as a fitl uh, yani koram or ikram to show um, respect, you know. Allah said about them, Ihbitu minha jami'a. All of you get down from here, mean from the heavens. Ba'dukum li ba'din adu. Each one of you will be an enemy to one another. So, this is the first point he makes when he starts to talk about the issue that the shaitan is an enemy to us and we are enemies to him. Meaning, we're at war fighting against him and he's fighting against us. Fighting against him to keep him from <clears throat> being the cause of our destruction by his tricks his plot, his whisper, and he's fighting against us to keep us from being uh, successful 
and obeying Allah and going to the paradise. So it's a constant fight as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the you know, one of each one of you, human being and jinn, human beings and you know, the devil, Ashaytan. And that's in Sofa Paha, the 20th Surah. And this is uh, 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 the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's so Paha. The next point, Ibn Joseph, he said the Shaitani will go I mean, from every path and from every angle to um, execute this enmity, this hatred and hostility against Adam and his offsprings. Well, you was whistle fi suduri nan, and he whispers to the chest of men. Whisper here means he suggests, he implants. He gives you the thought. He says to you as if someone talking to you, but you don't hear a voice, but you hear the idea, you hear the thought, you get the vision of something that came from nowhere. And the Sudur and Nas, Allah just mentioned Sudur, but he's talking about what's underneath. So Sudur and Abbey means chest. So when he whispers to your chest, meaning to the heart that's underneath the chest. And this happens from a way and a perspective that we don't see. Allah said, Innahu yara, innahu yara That he sees you, meaning at least the human being. Well, and those that are with him, min haythu, from where? La tarawnahu, a place where you don't see them. So, for example, they can be any yani, present anywhere in the masjid. They can be in the house outside. You won't know if they're standing around him, nor those that are with him. But they see you, and they see you from an area and from a place that you don't see them. So they are yani, invisible. Allah made them invisible. And at this point, the Sheikh is mentioning as it relates to how they use that as a tool of enmity. Allah Azza wa Jal, he also talked about them being together. Allah said, Inna shayateen awliyal, and ye we have made the devils. So here devils is plural. Meaning he believes in those that work with him against the Muslims, then they are called plural shayateen. Devils, and then he is the head devil he believes. And Allah said, we have made them workers and helpers together. For those who disbelieve. So the disbelievers, they are with the devils, and the devil is with them against the Muslims. And this also includes the hypocrites, those who profess Islam on the outside and disbelieve inside. May Allah protect us. Amen. This is one of the most famous books of Ibn Jawzi. Then this is, in this book, he tried to highlight all of the ways the shaitan will come to deceive or to trick the human being. And his tricking, yani, is to, yani, yuba'idukum an tarifu rahman, to make you far from the path of rahman. This is the plot of him and why he does it, that he wants to make you far from the path of Allah like he is. And yeah, Ibn Jul said, Faqad Hadar Allah, Faqad Hadar on Allah, Yani Amin Hufaqah. And Allah has warned us against him when he said, As Shaytan Ya'idukum, As Shaytan Ya'idukum. And the shaitan ya'idhukum, as shaitan ya'idhukum. The shaitan, he incites you and he calls you al-faqara, lil-faqara wal-fahsha. Yani, he makes you faqara, yani, afraid of poverty and fahsha. Fahsha is normally, when you see in the Quran or here in the Sunnah, it means illegal intercourse, as zina, adultery. Fornication. But here you see the context of the ayah. Ashaytanu ya'idukum al-faqra wa ya'murukum 
Bilfahshayatin. Shaitan threatens you with poverty. One fahsha here means in stinginess. So fahsha here doesn't mean illegal intercourse. It means being tight with your money. Why? Because you're afraid of poverty. So Allah has just mentioned that about shaitan. And, and Allah said, Allah, when you're in your home, and Allah, he promises you and calls you to Makhribatam Minhu wa fatla. But Allah, he calls you and promises you the opposite to his forgiveness by not feeling that you're going to not have because whatever he gives you, he's going to provide. And yani, uh, fatla means he's going to bless you with that which shaitan is telling you to hold on to, to be afraid of and that is well. So this, I mean, the shaykh, he brings the light to this eye to give us an idea before we start spoken about these plots and tricks of Iblis. Wallahu wasun alim wasi' meaning Allah, yani, is aware of everything and is alim, meaning he has the deep knowledge, he knows all that includes those who are poor and what they need, even if they're poor, Allah is going to give them. And that's the Surah Al-Baqarah. I believe he has, Ibn Josie, he continues, he says, I believe he has I mean, many ways of covering the truth. And what he does, and how he covers many ways of covering this truth. He makes the, uh, he covers the truth with evil and he covers the evil with truth. So he mixes them. And he mixes them. To the point that the Sheikh, he says, Hatta lepisa ala ulama'i, that he even can trick those people who have a lot of knowledge. And those people who are. Yeah, and he devoted in their worship and their serious in their commitment to Allah. And those who yet da'un and tasawwaf and those who claim Sufism, yeah, I mean, they, those who, they go against the legislation of Allah, tabarakul wa ta'ala. So you see, he has a variety, has something for everybody. And, 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 and this is uh, the the plot of him. Now the Sheikh is going to explain the term of Tilbis and then we're going to mention just from the table of contents we won't take like inside the book because it will take I mean, many lessons to do that so inshallah. So it said Tilbis. What is this word Tilbis? I can't explain it. The Sheikh he said Says when a person, yani, tabasa, um, yani, alayhi am, when a person, yani, um, covers the issue to make it look like something that it's not. So this is what we mentioned before. Similarly, what is talbis? And then you have a word called tadlis. So you have talbis from the word labisa, and you have tadlis from dalis. Dalis and tadlis is kind of like. When you uh, have something that you deceive somebody with when it comes to buying and selling, it's a khadia. Like, for example, the one who he sell it for, Professor mentioned this. And so, what the guy does, he takes the good fruit, put it on top. So, as you walk past, you look and say, Oh, wow, that fruit looks good. It catches your eye. Then, when you say, um, How much is those? He'll tell you. He said, give me a pound of that. Give me two pounds. Give me a kilo of lane, two kilos of that. Then, as he's bagging, he doesn't take what you see on the top. He takes it from underneath. And that underneath is not so good. So, this is the Yani Tadalis. So, Tadalis is the Yani when you yani, do some type of uh, trickery when it comes to trade and buying. So tadlis is a form of tadlis, but two different words. Tadlis, to cover that which is truth from falsehood, 
yani, uh, or, uh, that which is true with falsehood, and tajlis is a form of when you're going to yani, uh, commit like fraud, and, and, and the fraud is a way meaning that you uh, do kada, uh, you deceive somebody as it relates to the issue of buying and selling. Now the Sheikh has 13 chapters that he deals with in this book, 13. But each chapter is limited. So we're going to mention the 13 chapters, one of them after another, and then we'll mention the end, yeah, and some benefit from the first two chapters, inshallah, and then we'll end. The first chapter the Sheikh he mentions, and each chapter is part of where Shaytan will do the Tadis, how and where he will do his trick. So, and the Bible, oh, and the first chapter means the first thing. As it relates to the commandment to stick with the Sunnah, what Jama'a and the group. So, the first thing that the shaitan is going to come to deceive you in is the issue of the zombi sunnah yani clinging and holding to the sunnah or jama'ah and jama'ah they said it means the way of the companion so it's going to come and deceive you as it relates to that issue and you have some people said what jama'at because this is how he got the muslims to think it's okay to be in sex. He took Jama'ah and made it Jama'at. So the people that said, no, it's no problem you know, to be different groups because we're still one Ummah. But we should be upon the Sunnah of the Prophet was Jama'ah, which is singular. He tricked the believers to think it's okay to be uh, in different groups. And so he took Jama'ah and made it Jama'ah, plural. So that's the trick for the first thing to get the people to read the Sunnah and the Jama'ah. He made Jama'ah, Jama'ah. And this you see the Prophet when he talked about the Tabtabaku Ummati Allah Thalatha wa Sabayin the Firaqah. The Ma'am will divide to 73 sects. And some scholars said it's not just 73, but the Prophet mentioned that number and it became more than that from his time. So Sallam, I mean, he didn't include it to be restricted to 73. So changing the word, as al Taala mentioned about the Jews, um, changing the word here. He took Jama'ah and made a Jama'ah. Now, so this is the first thing tricking you as it relates to clinging to the Sunnah and the Jama'ah, which is the body of the Muslim companions. Now you have Jama'ah, what different people come with in different groups. The second thing, the 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 Baba Thani fi them and and the issue of condemning bid'a and the one who does the innovation. This is the second where he makes tilbis, tricks and culture. And the issue of them and bid'a and Because now today you have people saying, Malam that you should hate the action but not the person. Or you should show hostilities against the action, not the person. Or you shouldn't refute the person, just refute the action. This is tabis. No, nah, this is tabis. And you'll find that all through the history you have people when it's connected to going against the deen of Allah, the hostility is not going to be just against the action, it's going to be against the people as well. Uh, uh, the, 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 the third thing, uh, yani, as it relates to a fitting at least, yani, he tricks you as it relates to warning against the fitna of Iblis and his plots. Warning against yani, Iblis. His fitna and his plots. He tricks you to make you think that this is extremism or, you know, don't worry about that. So as long as you're guided, like we mentioned in the verse before, how people think of the eye and mind the business, as long as you're not doing it. This is yeah, trick number uh, 
number three. Trick number four. The the uh, the the ma'na atil bis wal bughur. Ma'na atil bis wal bughur. He tricks you with the meaning of til bis, whether it's trickery and bughur, being yani delusion. Yeah. So that's the fourth way he tricks you, the meaning of those words, which is til bis and bughur. As Allah said, wala tabughan na fil ladina yani. Don't yani, be deceived by those other people, you know, or Billahi or, or you know, they are deceived by, you know, Allah. Allah is not going to punish me. If he was going to punish me, why even do it now? This is the Gurur. This is delusion, you know, and uh, this is the fourth uh, trick. The fifth one is the trick of Yani Fi Yani Akhaid Yani with deeds. As it relates to a part of principle and, and the issue of deen, deen here means what's from the usul of the religion. So he tricks you as it relates to that. And how many people we heard we say, yani, well, you know, um, this principle, and they give you a principle, but that principle goes against the sharia, it goes against the deen. Yeah, men, part of the job of a scholar is to extract and to make principles. But one of the no knows is that that principle, can't go against the Sharia. So even if someone has a principle or extracts some rules, if it goes against the deen, that's why it's the Kawad of the deen, deen him in Sharia, the legislation. And Kawad, it means that he's making a principle, but that principle might be a false principle. So this is the deception here. When it comes to number six, it deceives you as it relates to principles and the foundation of the religion. Well, number seven. The deception um, as it relates to the scholar and the departments of knowledge. The scholar and the departments of knowledge. And we see it as it relates to um, Scholars go on astray, and people think, well, how can he do that? He's a scholar. No, it's straight time sometimes he deceives the scholar, you know, as it relates to the different sciences of the religion. One, for example, people taking that sheikh to be infallible, or they're taking the statement of the sheikh, even if it goes against the book of the sunnah, or they sheikh thinking that no one should yeah, and he go against his statement, rather everyone has been commanded to follow his statement. And this is yeah, and the seventh trick, the trick against the scholar and the knowledge the department or the knowledge that he has. Uh, that, actually, that's number six. Number seven is the decree that number that was number six the scholar being deceived as it relates to him and his knowledge number seven the trick against the leaders and those who are in charge and we see that and he almost that everywhere you look the leaders are corrupt it's tricking to make them think this is your job you're in charge there's nothing they can do you know and and and, and this is uh, the seventh trick from the tricks of Iblis. Number eight, yani al al yani fi al wa yani wa wa ibad. The trick of the person who is a person who is an abad. Abad means he's a person who's doing a lot of worship and he's devoted. So you trick trick that person. Who is Abad, yani a worshiper, yani, and has a lot of worship as it relates to his worship, tricking that person. How does he trick him? Make him think nobody's like you. You fast all the time. You pray all the time. You know, so Allah's gonna forgive you, he won't forgive the other people. Or by way of innovating, you know, do this to become closer to Allah. Because if you increase like this, then you know Allah's gonna love you. This is a trick against the one who is a worshiper and uh, need his worship. That was number nine. And Tasha, number ten. 
تكة البيستي على السحاب إذن جوزي مينتن ان نمبر تين the trick as he the shape of time as it relates to the people of 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 people of of Zohar, people of Zikr and Zohar. Zikr and Zohar, he had made one who stays away from the things he doesn't need of the dunya. And you can see that with the people of Bidah. They stay away from so much of the dunya that they start to innovate. Yeah, you stay away from dunya based on knowledge, based on, you know, trying to draw near to Allah, to Allah. Once you start to put innovation in that Zohar, and even yeah, I mean, that zuhud can be wrong. So it comes to the person who's leaving off dunya in a way that makes that person uh, deceived about the reality to the person who innovates as it relates to his uh, leaving off the things that he does not need of the dunya. For example, the person said, well, you know, uh, I'm just going to give away all my money and all my food. Allah will feed me. He looks to the heaven for food and, and he says, uh, not zuhud. Zuhud is you leave what you don't need, but what you need you keep. So this is number 10. <clears throat> number uh, number that was uh, number 9 I'm sorry, the issue of uh, being tricked as it is related to person leaving off the dunya. Number 10 is the, the the trickery of the people who are um, uh, those people who are the Sufiya. And we know that the, the, the statement of Suf means a person would, you know, um, wear uh, meager clothes, yani, and that person would uh, stay away from dunya except he needed it. But he, the trick of the shaitan made them to do innovation and to make shirk and to call them the deceased. And so this is the, uh, how he deceived those people of Sufi, Allah Muslim. Then to believe they can be one with Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala and that their shaykh is above the Prophet and like this. That's number 10. Number 11, and there's three, two more after this. Number 11, Zikr Talbis al Mutadiyyin. And the mention of the uh, trick of shaitan of the people who are religious. And in, in this way, what he means by this is that those people that are religious, meaning they have a lot of worship and dicker, then they kind of uh, resemble those people who die, that we, we call them in English saints, in Arabic they call them uh, uh, Qur'an uh, mat. Qur'an mat, those people to be respected and acknowledged who died because of their devotion to Allah. So he comes and he makes people and their worship to Allah try to emulate those people. Try to emulate those people. And this is one of the tricks. This is trick number 11. Asani Ashur number 12, Zikr Talbisi al Awam. How he deceives the layman people. So we can see the layman, you know, they don't need to come, you know, pray in the masajid, they don't need to learn how to read the Quran properly. They don't, in fact, need to be religious at all. Even one brother told me, said, you know, maybe in another five, ten years, you know, it's going to be really bad. He said, because now the push for the youth is not, don't be a Muslim, not be a Jew, not be a Christian. The issue is, they said, you know, religion is no religion. So this is the awam, you know, he, how he tricks the common folk to just feel, you know, freedom and, you know, that which is amusement and fun and, you know, that religious stuff is for the older people. When we get older, we worship. Or, you know, that's for the old-fashioned people, you know, the new time and the new millennium is this and like that. And the 13th thing is the, the, the trick against everybody as it relates to their actions uh, how how Tadweel uh, Amaliani uh, this means to um, the best way to translate Tadweel Amal to do actions without the proper intention 
to do any actions without the proper intention. So people are doing actions, but he deceives you, you need to do it, you need for this, to do it for that. And you might feel, no, I'm doing it for the sake of the law. But he made you feel like that when in reality there's some showing off or there is some, you know, um, to boast or to be in the spotlight or, you know, doing it out of embarrassment or like this. You know? And so when you look at the likes of those 13 chapters, then there's evidence for each one of those things and their statements of the people of knowledge that back up, you know, different hadith, statements of the companions, statements of the tabi'in, the bad tabi'in. You have all of these different statements that are brought in order to uh, make each, uh, each um, point clear. Like the narration of Ibn Umar he said, Anna Umar al Khattab, Anna Umar ibn al Khattab. He said, My father, Umar Khattab al Nas. He gave the khutbah and then he said, Kama fi na Rasulullah. The Prophet stood up and he said to us one time, He said, Whoever wishes to have the entry into the paradise let him clean the jama'ah see here Omar did say jama'ah like she said jama'ah which is singular he said for in the shaitan yani al-ma'awahid wa huwa ma'ithnein ab'a and he's with one person when you're alone and many scholars they talk about this, you know, it's not good to be alone. You know, this is one reason why they encourage marriage, you know, because when you're alone, the shaitan can whisper, shaitan can make you lazy, shaitan make you do this. You have no body, you know, to be a companion with you. So this narration, Omar said, that the son of whoever wishes to enter the paradise, uh, then let that person uh, 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 hold to the jama'ah. And the, here, jama'ah means in Arabic, the group, but it also means the group that's on what's right. And the first group that's, that's right, as it relates to doing that time, is the companion. So it has two meanings. Hold to the body of the Muslims, and you during that time, meaning the way of the companion. And in your time, if you're not in that time, also to the body of the Muslims. Don't be a stray or alone. And that's why I said, because the shaitan is with one person, and he's further away from two people than he is when the person is alone. So this is an example of how the, the Sheikh would bring the evidence to prove the first point that he wants to bring in each one of those uh, sections that deals with the trick, how the Sheikh kind of tricks you. And there's many other texts, but we want to give an overview and to show how the shaitan is, as we mentioned before, is the enemy. You know? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the shaitan, yani, the shaitan is weak, and the head of shaitan cannot die either. The plot of shaitan is weak. So how does he succeed? He succeeds because we become weaker than him. And the way we become weaker than the shaitan is about sin. And not holding and clinging and, and being upon that which Allah has commanded us to slack. You know, or we uh, give in to desire or we take a shortcut anytime you do something that's wrong, it weakens you, it gives the openness of the shaitan. It gives a way for him to uh, whisper to you, to suggest to you, to influence you. And this, Allah mentioned, Where the shaitan is the enemy to you, so take him as the enemy. In the shaitan, yani, adu, insan, mubin, that shaitan is a clear enemy to the human being. And you have so many eyes where Allah mentions this. So we want to bring the light of some of these points from this book to show that the shaitan, he has tricks and he has plot. And Allah has told you how to deal with him. Be aware of him. Fight against him. One of the ways that is done with knowledge. Righteous deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector.